In this lesson, we'll take a look at an overview of curve sketching, uh, the textbook section called Putting It All Together. And we're going to use all those tools, the local minimum, maximum, where the function is increasing and decreasing, intercepts, asymptotes, uh, points of inflection, concavity, two graph functions. We're going to do two examples. Uh, one will be on the first two pages and the second example on the third and fourth. So first of all, in example one here, here's our, uh, our uh, polynomial we're asked to graph. And the first thing we're going to take a look at are the intercepts. So if you put 0 in place of x, um, that gives you the y-intercept. And of course, if you put 0 in place of x here, 0 cubed minus 6 times 0 squared plus 9 times 0, that's 0. So f of 0 is 0. The origin is the only y-intercept. Now, if we set the function equal to 0, that's where we can find the x-intercepts. Because basically, we're putting 0 in place of f of x or y. There's the 0. And we'll solve for x. And those will be the x, uh, at the x intercepts. Now notice that you can factor a common factor in x out of uh, this um, cubic. <clears throat> and so this is what we have. Now x squared minus 6x plus 9 will factor. There are two numbers that add to negative 6 and multiply to 9, and they're both negative 3. This is actually a perfect square trinomial. So this will factor into x minus 3 times x minus 3, or x minus 3 squared. So we have two different factors, so there's two different x-intercepts. And so if we set x equal to 0, we get 0. And if we set x minus 3 to 0 and solve for x, we'll get 3. So 0 and 3 are the two x-intercepts. Now let's take a look at the derivative. The derivative of x cubed will be 3x squared. The derivative of negative 6x squared will be minus 12x. The derivative of 9x will be 9. So that's our first derivative. And we can set that equal to 0 to find out where any extrema might be, any local maximum or local minimum, any critical points. So we set it equal to 0, and notice that everything divides evenly by 3. So we'll divide a 3 out, and we're left with an x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. And so to factor this, and if you want to use the quadratic form, you can, but it's fairly easily factored. Uh, the two numbers that add to negative 4 and multiply to positive 3 would be negative 1 and negative 3. So this will factor into x minus 1 times x minus 3. So if we set these two factors to 0, we get 1 and 3. Those are our critical points, our possible local extrema. Notice that the 3 here is the same as the x-intercept. So at the x-intercept of 3, there's a possible minimum or maximum point. So we know what the y-coordinate of that is because it's an x-intercept. So for let's find the y-coordinate of the point where x is 1. And so we'll put 1 back in the original function, and that works out to be 4. So that'll be the point 1, 4. There's a possible local minimum or maximum point there. Now, to figure where the graph is increasing or decreasing, the only place, unless there's a vertical asymptote, it can change from increasing to decreasing is at critical points, at uh, extrema points. And so that's why I'm going to check to the left of 1, between 1 and 3, and then to the right of 3 in the first derivative. And remember, its sign tells you where the function is increasing or decreasing. I'm checking, first of all, to the left of 1. I'm using 0. And so I put 0 in the uh, derivative function up here, and we get positive 9. That's greater than 0. So the function is increasing to the left of 1. Now we'll check between 1 and 3. I'll use 2 in the derivative. And that works to be negative 3. So it's gone from increasing to decreasing. Uh, the first derivative is a negative value, so it's decreasing between 1 and 3. And then we'll check to the right of 3. I'll use 4. f prime of 4 is back to a positive number. It's 9. And so it's gone back to increasing again. So our function is increasing to the left of 1 and where x is greater than 3, so below 1 and greater than 3, and it's decreasing between 1 and 3. On the second page here, let's start plotting a few points that we know. Remember, 0, 0 is the uh, x and y intercept, and then 3 was another x intercept. Remember, there's a local extrema there, and the point 1, 4 is a potential local extrema as well where we set the first derivative to 0, we got 1 and 3. 1 and 3. So remember from the previous page, this is our derivative. So now let's take the second derivative and check if we have any uh, uh, points of inflection, where the, what, what the concavity is like. So the derivative of the first derivative is 6x minus 12. And we set that equal to 0 and solve for x. And of course, we'll get x equals 2. So that's a, a potential point of inflection. 
So now we'll check in the second derivative to the left of 2 and the right of 2. Uh, I'm going to check at 1 because remember 1 is one of my critical points and uh, the second derivative will tell me whether it's concave up or concave down and if that's an actual min or max. So at 1 in the second derivative, f double prime of 1, works out to negative 6. So the graph is concave down here, so this has to be a local maximum point. So we have a local maximum point at the point 1 comma 4. Now I'm going to check at 3 here, that's my other critical point. So in the second derivative, the second derivative at 3, 6 times 3 minus 12, works out to positive 6. And that's positive, that's greater than 0, so the graph is concave up here, so this has to be a local minimum point. So a local minimum point at 3, 0. So the graph is concave down. Now we check to the left of 2, it's concave down there, and it's concave up to the right of 2. Remember, when we checked at 3, that was a number bigger than 2. So it's, it's concave down on x is less than 2, and concave up where x is greater than 2. Now, we found the concavity changed from concave down to concave up, so where x equals 2, there is a point of inflection, so if I put 2 in back in the original function, I actually get a y value of 2 as well, so the 2, 2 point right here actually is our point of inflection. And so this is what the graph must look like. It's concave down to the left of 2, and we have a local maximum here. It's concave up to the right of 2, and we have a local minimum here. So that's what our cubic function looks like.